Uh, I think we're going to get started right now. My name is Jessica Sinclair. I'm the current uh, University of Virginia Students Union Vice President of External Affairs. Um, so I'm just going to introduce the uh, the panel, as it were, right now. Um, we have Cheryl Toth representing Luther, um, Teresa Cullen representing Campion College. If you guys just want to give a little wave, there you are. <laughs> um, and to my left, we have Mike Young, um, who is speaking on his own behalf, and uh, Nathan Seckinger, who is the director with our Giebler Center for Sexuality and Gender Diversity. So um, yeah, please feel free to applaud. Um, so we're going to be starting with Nathan, he's going to make a brief statement, and then Mike is. Um, and then all of the people up here will be available to answer questions after a few, if you guys have any. So without further ado, here's uh, our Jeebler director, Nathan, and uh, yeah, enjoy the show. Hi there. Um, I'd also like to thank my, uh, my parents, uh, Suzanne and Lane Seckinger, for uh, coming today and standing with me. I'm uh, kind of shaky. So it's nice that there's been so much support. Uh, we really appreciate it. <clears throat> could you, Mike, could you hand me my, my water? Thanks. Two months ago, a 15-year-old California boy asked another boy to be his valentine. The other boy responded by bringing a gun to school and shooting him in the head in front of their grade 8 class. A week later, a 17-year-old transvestite was shot dead in Florida only a few blocks away from the place where another transgender adolescent was murdered five years ago. <clears throat> a week after that, another man was gay bashed in the same city. Although these most recent attacks occurred in the United States, it can be just as deadly to be gay or transgender in Canada. In your press kits, you will find a list of homophobic murders that occurred in Canada in the 12 years following the now infamous drinking party where Tom Lukiewski divided Canadians into A's and B's. Even our straight friends are being mocked, harassed, and beaten for looking too gay or for having gay friends. This week, Giebler heard two separate reports of Regina boys being attacked because they were mistaken for homosexuals. Depression is also killing gay, bisexual, and transgender youth through eating disorders, drug addictions, and suicide. Gay kids are desperate to be loved and accepted. Many are fanatically dieting and consuming speedy drugs so that they can look more like fashion models in the hope that they will become popular. <coughs> Excuse me. Having searched our souls to the bottom, we firmly reject the idea that being gay or transgender is a disease, and we do not wish to be cured of our gender. Our depression is a direct consequence of living in a society that has rejected our being. Only love and acceptance by all Canadian society will make this depression go away. The Conservative Party and the Canadian Alliance that came before have consistently voted against every House bill that has been introduced to protect gay and transgender people, yet they have never proposed any protections of their own. Neither has the Saskatchewan Party. Homophobic bigots and hate websites almost unanimously endorse the Conservatives. Conservative Party members have an obligation to condemn homophobic attitudes among their voter base, but they have done nothing about that either. This is why the gay community was angry at Tom's joke, and this is why we can't accept the argument that it happened too long ago to be significant. Many Canadians, unaware of this historical context, have moved quickly to forgive Tom. After all, who among us has not done something stupid and obnoxious while drunk with friends? We do not want to live in a country that punishes people for old mistakes even when they are truly sorry. The gay community can accept the argument that Tom made a mistake while drunk and that his apology ought to be accepted. We also apologize on behalf of gay and transgender youth for those times when we have allowed our hurt feelings to make us angry or unreasonable. But it will be impossible for us to forgive Tom's party without a good faith commitment on their part. And while other parties have recently voted in our favour on certain matters, no Canadian political party has adequately addressed the health and safety crisis that currently faces the gay and transgender community. <clears throat> we, 
We, the queer and straight youth of Regina, want to send a message to Canada. And the message is this. We are tired of watching our friends get hurt while politicians use gay rights as pawns in a giant chess game. We want Canadians to know that we have learned how to be friends with each other despite our political, religious, and sexual differences. We call on the rest of Canada to do the same. That is why we have come here today representing students on both the left and the right, and including religious groups as well as gay and transgender people. We at the Giebler Center for Sexuality and Gender Diversity have agreed that we will accept Brad Walls and Tom Lukiewski's apologies on the condition that the Saskatchewan Party and the Conservative Party prove they are committed to protecting us by immediately committing to the following course of action. First, they must immediately institute a zero tolerance policy for homophobic and transphobic bullying, name calling and jokes throughout the Saskatchewan school system. This must include mandatory homophobia and transphobia sensitivity training as part of the curriculum in every grade from middle years through high school graduation. Second, they must commit to providing adequate health care, especially mental health care, for needs that are specific to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and intersex people. This must include mandatory homophobia and transphobia sensitivity training for doctors, nurses, and other medical staff. Third, <clears throat> they must ensure adequate funding and training for departments and organizations that work to reduce homophobia in Canada so that their staff have sufficient resources to provide this sensitivity training. Fourth and finally, they must establish an arm's length commission under public scrutiny which can recommend ways to balance religious and sexual rights in a fair and equitable manner that is respectful to both left and right wing groups. We at Giebler recognize the rights of Canadians to express very different views about issues such as taxation, privatization, freedom of speech, and the definition of family. While these are important concerns, we insist that they must not interfere with the protection of Canadian citizens from violence, humiliation, and hopelessness. We call on our neighbours to put aside their philosophical debates until such time as we can discuss these matters in a safe and friendly environment. Thank you. We're now going to call on Mike Young to come up and uh, make his statement. Hello friends, my name is Mike Young and I am an Evangelical Christian. The reason I'm here today is to represent young Evangelicals who are trying to find their place in a larger movement that seeks an end to the hostility that has been a hallmark of the dialogue between us conservative evangelicals and our more liberal counterparts for far too long. It has been unfortunate that legitimate discussion about the boundaries of sex, marriage, and family has degraded from a fruitful discussion into an academic fist fight which sees both sides seeking the upper hand in a debate that hasn't gone anywhere for a very long time. The reason the debate goes nowhere is because progress can only be made when the discussion is a search for truth that is legitimate. Once the difference of opinion is turned into, into a political wedge issue, the discussion, which began as a very important sharing of ideas, becomes merely a surrogate for ideological and pol political bickering. A friend of mine once told me that when you engage in mudslinging, all that happens is that your hands get dirty and you lose a lot of ground. This is what happened in the discussion between LGBTI groups and evangelicals. The result has been fragmented communities, broken friendships, and a loss of progress. That being said, I'm not asking either side to engage in any kind of intellectual surrender. The dialogue must remain healthy and robust. A dialogue that ceases to be both healthy and robust ceases to find truth. However, the moment we lose a healthy dialogue, we sacrifice truth on the altar of belligerence, only to find hostility as a god whose feet are made from clay. This is why today we are calling to an end to the hostilities and for the start of a robust and healthy dialogue between our communities that occurs in a safe environment so that we can better understand one another in a spirit of friendship. The existence of disagreement does not require the existence of animosity. Thank you. 